You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's my brother, can you spare a dime? My God shall supply my need. Don't have to beg because I am a seed. Because every good and perfect gift comes from the Father who I Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is 2019. We are so excited to be here today. Amen. Uh, Minister Van should be uh, joining us in a, a few minutes. Amen. In fact, she just signed on. Amen. But it's 2019, man. I'm excited. Amen. We got an awesome broadcast to start the year out. Uh, right. I'm going to let Minister Van do the intro. Amen. And uh, uh, give her a couple of seconds while she's getting herself together. Amen. Um, I want to remind you, Minister Ben at the Wims is on every Tuesday at 7 p.m., starting the year off right. The first broadcast of the year is um, Hits of Bound and Grace. Uh, of course, don't forget about the other broadcast that we got uh, Declaring the Finished Work with Reverend Pat Randall's Thursday at 12 noon, Friday Night Joy with myself. Um, at 7 p.m., The Bread of Life, uh, amen, at 7 p.m. Challenge to Change is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. My monthly broadcast uh, as follows, Lifeline with Apostle Shirley Jones. It's every first Monday, amen, at 7 p.m. The Bold and the Beautiful with Reverend Novena Reed, Reverend Curtis Austin, and Minister Jordana Cunningham. It's every second Saturday at 10 a.m. Adoration with Evangelist Lewis McElwain. It's every third Monday of the month, amen, at at uh, 7 p.m., Marriage Takeover, the body of one Reverend Eric, Reverend Tamika Thompson. It's every third Sunday at 7 p.m., Hour 3, Real Life, Real Men, and Real Talk with with myself, Reverend Ray Elston Green. Amen. Um, Cleopas Malone and Antonio Mitchell is every second Sunday at 7 p.m. And our weekly prayer is as follows. Midday Glory Prayer, Reverend Gwen Dixon, is every Wednesday at 1 p.m. The dialer number is 641-715-3580. SS code is 732-499. And don't forget again, declaring the finished work of Reverend Pat Randall's Thursday at 12 noon. So I'm excited uh, about um uh, the, the new year, amen, um, we are expecting great things, we're expecting great things in your life, amen, and I just want to say Happy New Year, Minister Vanessa, to you. Thank God, around. Happy New Year, amen. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. All right, God bless you. So, do we, uh, Happy New Year, everyone, this is Minister Van, ba- it's been a while since I've been live, I just thank God for Reverend Ray, and for When Christian Speak Talk Radio. And I'm just excited to um, be able to share um, with you this evening that my pastor, um, a pre-recorded message from my very own pastor, um, Daniel Floyd. Uh, the message is called Dead Ends and Temporary Detours. Dead Ends and Temporary Detours. Again, this is a message previously recorded by my pastor, Daniel Floyd. Pastor Daniel is the senior pastor at Life Point Church based in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Life Point is one church with multiple locations in Virginia. And Life Point exists so that people far from God will become fully alive in Christ. For more information regarding our Life Point Church, please click on our website, and that's HTTP. LifePoint.org. That's LifePoint.org. LifePoint.org. I want to take this opportunity to wish everyone a very happy new year um, from all of us here at the Christian Speak Talk Radio. So without further delay, let's go to God in prayer, and then I'm going to turn it over to Reverend Ray. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, Lord. Thank you, Father, for giving us another opportunity, God, to be with you, to to share your good news, Lord God. We just thank you, Father, for your many blessings in our lives. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing us over to 2019. Lord, we did not take this for granted, Father. We just thank you, Lord God, for that in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we ask and thank you, Lord God, that you'll 
The people listening this evening, Lord God, will be blessed and touched by this message. And the souls will come crying out to you, Lord God. The souls will be delivered and set free in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Vanessa. Amen. So this is His Abounding Grace presents with Minister Vanessa. Amen. Um, Pastor Daniel Floyd, Dead Ends and Temporary Detours. God bless. We're celebrating the greatest gift that God ever gave us in Jesus. And um, I want to read our text today and then just kind of want to walk through it and share some thoughts with you. And, uh, and then we'll go. We'll be done and you can go on your way. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. And uh, it'll be on the screen for you if you don't have a copy of the Bible with you. It says this, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph was her husband, a righteous man, um, and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. What is in her is from God. She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child, will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. God came to us. If you've ever wondered if God is afar off or if God is disconnected from your life, he's not. Christmas proves that God came near to us. And if you need God to be near to you, um, then God will be near to you today if you invite him to come near to you. He says, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. All right, I'm supposed to be reading the text. I'll stop there. Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. Listen to that. When he woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded. There was a human responsibility in this whole story. Joseph had to do something. And I'm praying many of you do something today. You take a step towards God, that, that you don't live in a passive uh, posture, but that you move towards God today. Joseph woke up and he did something. You've got you've to go do something um, in response to what I believe God wants to say to you today. You know, we're celebrating the greatest gift ever given to humanity in Jesus, but I believe a close second is the iPhone. Come on, somebody. This came from Jesus through Steve Jobs. See, God can do anything with anyone. And, uh, and I, I tell you if, you know, if you have Android Hopefully by the time you get out today You know Jesus And you'll go to your cell phone carrier And switch to the Christian phone <laughs> I'm kidding I'm kidding But I tell you The reason I like the iPhone so much um, Is because it, it, it does so much for me Right? Like, and my favorite feature on the iPhone is Hey Siri Come on somebody Hey Siri See all the Android people are like We don't have that you're missing out in life. So, um, matter of fact, Siri's talking to me right now. So, the, but the, I love to say Siri because Siri will text for me. Um, I can be riding down the road. Siri will make a call for me. Hey, Siri, call, you know, whatever. Hey, Siri, text. So, so. And then I'll say, sometimes you've got to be careful, though, because Siri don't always get your text right. And especially as a preacher texting, you could text some things that are inappropriate. Then you've got to quickly pull over, follow up, because I don't text and drive. Like some heathens. Um, but uh, my favorite feature is the maps feature. And hey Siri, I need to go wherever because the maps feature will tell me what time I'm going to get there, how long it's going to take me. It'll even show me like red, like 95 is pretty much always red, red, yellow, come on somebody, blue. Um, it'll show me, I, was, I did a wedding yesterday. Yes, the day before Christmas services, um, because I dearly love this family. And um, so I, 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 we were heading up 95, along with a million of my best friends. I had to, like, repent this morning and have a lot of prayer and confession of what I thought and said yesterday on the interstate so I could preach today. Um, but uh, it could, And Siri told me, you know, it's going to take you 12,000 hours to get to Lorton, Virginia, because you're on 95. And... Um, but, uh, you know, I just, I love that feature. I love it because you can just say, hey, Siri, 
And uh, all of you don't have an iPhone, I'm sorry for you. Hey Siri, directions home. Getting directions to home. Isn't that wonderful? I can get home in 17 minutes right now. That's it. it, and it tells me. I can avoid tolls or I can take tolls. Thankfully I have no tolls. She's telling me to get out on Route 3. You're of the devil. <laughs> route, route 3 of Christmas is not happening. But, but Siri won't always lead you right because how many of you know sometimes the maps aren't updated? So we, when we moved into our house um, a little over three years ago, um, the roads were not updated yet because it was, it was a newer subdivision. And so what Siri would do is Siri would take you down past our neighborhood to the next neighborhood, and then it would bring you into this dead-end road, and then it would say, get out and proceed through the woods. Like, now you've got to get on feet. So people would call me and be like, hey, um, I'm trying to find your house, but it's telling me to walk now through the woods. I was like, I live out in Spotsylvania. We don't have a road yet. Just walk through. I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. Everybody listen. I'm just messing with you. We had a paved street, running water, indoor plumbing. And so, but it would take you to a dead end. And I started thinking about that as it relates to life sometimes, how that sometimes we find ourselves in dead ends in our life. Do we not? A dead end is that place in your life where you feel like you can't make any progress. Or it's that place in your life where maybe you've kind of lost hope. Like, will this ever get better? Um, will this ever turn around? Will this situation ever change um, to my advantage? Will I ever see some progress in this area? And here's what I know, is that all of us have faced some area in our life that was a dead end. Maybe it was a marriage that, man, you had so many dreams and so many visions of what it could be and would be and, and ended up being a dead end. Or maybe you started into some business venture and, and you took the risk and you pushed all the chips to the center of the table and... It ended up being a dead end, and, or maybe it was something in a career. Maybe it's something internal. Maybe you're like, will I ever get out of the cycle of this insecurity? Can I ever move past? I feel like I've hit this dead end over and over of, of anxiety and being overwhelmed. and I feel like I continually get in this financial cycle where I just hit a dead end. It doesn't seem like I can ever break through this. I think that we've all been there at some place in our life, and here's what I want you to know in this Christmas season is that the Christmas story begins at a dead end. Here's what I mean by that. Joseph and Mary are engaged. Now, the Bible says that they were husband and wife, and the reason that it says that is because in the culture and the context of um, the, the writing of the story and of when Mary and Joseph would have lived is that... Um, to be engaged, or, or an, an old English word, is to be betrothed to one another, meant that they were practically married without the benefits. Take your kids to kiss point. They had not come together. Y'all follow me? Come on, back row, y'all. They hadn't had sex yet. All right, some of y'all, you didn't seem like you were getting, I'll just play it out plainly for you. Hadn't come together, like not a date? They hadn't been to coffee together? No. They hadn't got busy, all right? <laughs> Some of you are like, what kind of church is this? <laughs> Not your grandmother's church. Anyways, and so we... I'm sorry. Sorry. Let's get it together. This is an Easter crowd. I need to be more dignified. What we learned from the text about the story of Mary and Joseph is they had not yet consummated the commitment of marriage of much of all age. Anyways, they weren't married. They, you know, so in that, in that day and age, to, to break off an engagement, they had to give file for papers of divorce. That's how serious the, the commitment of engagement was, although they had not come together yet. So the Bible tells us that Mary and Joseph were pledged to be married together, but they had not come together yet. And so you can imagine, like, they're planning the wedding. And, and if, if you've been there or, or man, if you, you're like, man, I can't wait for that day, you've kind of thought through what that, that's going to be about and the emotion and the excitement and, and the, you know, the love and you're getting the register. Come on, that's, that's the part that I liked about it all. Um, I like the honeymoon, but I like the registering part, you know, give me that gun to go through Target. I was like, I was snapping everybody. I was like, can I go to Lowe's and do this? Can I register at Lowe's? Can I register at the BMW? Anyways, can I, you know, you never know. You got to go big or go home. And so all this excitement. And then, and then Mary's like, hey, Joseph, I need to talk to you. Sure, Mary, what's up? We've got something to share with you. 
Yeah, what's going on? You know? Is everybody coming in for the day? Hotel rooms taken care of? A couple stables? In-laws can stay at? Or, I'm just saying. They didn't have hotels. I don't mean that. Any bad. Well, actually, um, I don't know how to say this. I'm pregnant. And it's not yours. See, I think we sanitize this Christmas story. It's baby Jesus in a manger laying on the hay and Mary and Joseph. Mary just gave birth. She ain't sitting like this. It didn't go down that way in Mary Washington. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? And I have an infant in my house right now. They are not laying quietly. That song is a lie. The cat are a-lowing, the baby awakes. But little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. Not my baby. They wake up, they're yelling. Mary didn't even have a pacifier. You know what I'm saying? But seriously, can you imagine the shock? I wonder if you've ever been there where you got some news that you felt like somebody had thrown a grenade in your life. Imagine that's what Joseph felt. Here he is planning, assuming, thinking life would turn out a certain way, and now he's at a dead end. He's at a dead end because the Bible tells us that in his mind he's like, it's over. I need to divorce her quietly. He was going to be respectful because he was a righteous man. He wasn't going to shame her publicly, but he wasn't going to move forward with her either because just like you wouldn't believe it Joseph didn't believe that this baby she conceived was from God I don't know about you but I imagine most of the guys today wouldn't buy that story we'd be like who's God did he just move in the neighborhood I mean a new family moved in is that their son God is that what they call him I'm going to introduce him to the devil I mean, for real, right? And Joseph's at a dead end. He's at a dead end. And I imagine for you that there's been moments in your life where you got the news, you got the text, you got the phone call, or even worse, you got the news through somebody else that just blew up your world. Everything was good. Everything was peaceful. Life was moving in the right direction. Then, bam, you... And it's in those moments where you don't have the answer. As smart as you may be, as resourced as you may be, as connected as you may be, there will come moments in your life where you don't have the solution. And you need something outside of yourself. Joseph, his solution was to marry her, divorce her, because here's what happens. When you don't know what to do, you do the only, you do the only thing you know to do. And that's whatever's within your strength. And can I tell you something? As amazing as you are and as wonderful as you look, at some point your strength runs out. As much as you may be able to accumulate, and I don't think God is against that, and as healthy as you may be and as much as you may work out, at some point at the end of the day, your money can't buy you out of the situation. Your strength can't pull you out of the situation. You need something that is outside of you. You need something that's outside of you. And some of us find ourselves in dead ends because we have a dead end mindset. We have a dead end mentality. This is what Joseph, the Bible says that he had in his mind to divorce her quietly. He had in his mind. Can I tell you, often what you have in your mind is not what God has in his mind. I don't mean that from a, from a, like a condemning perspective. I mean that you're often thinking too small. And God is thinking much bigger. Uh, and I, I would parenthetically insert into the message right now, um, if you don't know this, and I don't know the religious system you grow up in, but the God of Christianity is not a God that is in heaven waiting to get you. That He's not waiting to zap you. That He's not up with His heavenly taser gun just waiting for you to screw up so that He can zap you. He's not up there with a the baton waiting for you to get out of line so He can whack you back in line. The Bible says that He is a good God, that He's a loving Father. I don't know how your Father was, but your Heavenly Father 
The Bible says, I know the plans I have for you. They're plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. He says, I'm a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is a good God. The God of the Bible loves you so much that he sent his only son to die for you, to give his life for you. When you were still far from God, Emmanuel, God came to us. This is the God of the Bible. And you have to know that. Because some of you had wanted to live your life just kind of off God's radar. <laughs> I just don't want God to see me. No, He sees you. With all of your brokenness, with all of your fronts, masks, faces. Because we all have those, don't we? In this situation, we'll be this person. I'm leader, I'm entrepreneur, I'm, and I get that. It takes some of that to start a church with 50 people and see it become what it is today. I get that. Some of us, we have to put on the mask at the office. Some of us, we got a mask for school. Some of us, we have. But here's the deal. God knows the real you, and He still loves you. He still loves you. With all your baggage, all the issues, I think some of us find ourselves in a dead end in life because of this, is how can I be successful in so many areas of my life but feel like a failure in this one area? I think this is a lot of us. We're successful on the job. Marriage is rolling. Our kids. To everybody else, it would look as though we've got it together. But you and I both know there's that one area that plagues your mind. And it is so frustrating, the dichotomy that lives within your soul. Because yet you are so successful in one area, but you cannot beat this one area. You have all the answers in these areas. And no matter how much you try, no matter how much you accumulate, no matter how much advice you get, you can't seem to win in this one area. So we end up in a dead end. We have dead end mindsets. Joseph had a dead end mindset. It was like, well, this is it. It's over. I'll fix it myself. I'll divorce her quietly. Good, I mean, the motive was pure. I don't want to shame her. I don't want to embarrass her. Pure motive. Wrong solution. Another way that we have a dead end mindset is some of us, we have got to a place in our life where, where the thing we keep bumping up against, we just think that's our lot in life. And so we take up residence in the dead end. Well, I've never been able to get past this addiction, so this is just my life. Well, my family was in a cycle of financial ruin, and I'll just live in that cycle. Well, nobody in my life has ever stayed married, so our marriage probably. And so you just take up residence. You kind of, you kind of surrender to the challenges that you have in life. And I just want you to know that that's not God's best for you, that that's not what God wants for you. God doesn't want you to live in the dead end because God has a way of doing this, of taking dead ends and turning them into temporary detours to take you to another level and to another dimension. If you'll invite him in. Here's the thing about God, though, is that he's a gentleman. He'll allow you to stay at the dead end if you keep pushing him out. I don't need you. I don't want anything to do with you, God. I got this. I got this. I'm a fixer. I can handle it. I can handle it, God. God will go, okay. If you don't want me there... I mean, the Bible says that he says, I stand at the door and knock. The metaphor is, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. It doesn't say, I stand at the door and kick it in. You've got to be the one to turn the knob and open the door to him. But he says, if you'll invite me in, I'll come in. I'll come in. I'll be in relationship with you. See, God wants a relationship with you, not religion. Religion will frustrate you because religion says this. Here is a system by which you can get to God. Let me tell you, you'll never do enough right stuff to get to God. Your good will never outweigh your bad. The Bible says, Jesus said, your best days 
are like dirty rags. Your very best. I mean, the day that you were... You know, you cared for the poor, and you gave to the needy, and you didn't cuss anybody out, and, and you didn't cut anybody off in traffic, and you gave nobody sign language. You, the day you felt like you were on all cylinders, you were nice to the people in your office, you were blessing your employees. On that best day, he says, it's like dirty rags. Religion says, here's how you can climb to God. Here's the ladder. Do better. Try harder. Do more. Uh, on, on. Go to this. Go to that. Go through this. Jump through that hoop. Jump through that hoop. And Jesus said, no, Christianity says God comes down to us, puts us on his back, and then climbs up to the Father. He says this. He says that it's not of our works. The Apostle Paul wrote, it's not of our works so that none of us get the credit, but it is the grace of God alone. Religion says try your best to get to God. Christianity said I'll send my only son down to you because you can never get to me and I will give you grace and mercy and forgiveness. I knock at the door. I won't kick it in, but I knock at the door. You invite me in and I'll come. Some of us have a dead end mindset that this is just our lot in life. This is where we're going to be forever. I'm just telling you, if you'll invite God into your dead ends, they will turn into detours. Think about this. Joseph was about to walk away from God. Literally. If he had divorced her, and he had walked away from her, she was giving birth to the Son of God, fully God, fully man. He would have literally been walking away from God. And sure, there were some broken dreams. Sure, there were some comments made. Sure... People in the community were posting about Mary's pregnant. She says it's God. Can you believe that? And Joseph believed her. And sure, there was some... But God was temporarily detouring their life to take them to another place. He got to become the earthly father of Jesus. And can I tell you something? If you'll invite God in, what seems like broken dreams, what seems like hopes that were dashed, can turn into a detour where God takes you to something so much greater. See, our God takes us from victory to victory. Not defeat to defeat. That's not His M.O. So Joseph, after he thought about all this, God stepped in with an angel and gave him a dream. And he said to her, what is in her is from me. It was a statement of origin. What do I mean by that? I mean that what was in her did not originate by natural means or earthly means. It came from spiritual means. And the origin of something is so important because if you misdiagnose the origin, you will prescribe a solution that will leave you hurting. Many of you have done that. You've prescribed a, a natural solution to a spiritual problem. You just thought, if I tried harder, if I do better, I'll get up the next day. If I just read more, maybe go to counseling, which all that is great. I'm for all that. I'm going to stop lashing out in anger. I'm not going to yell at my wife anymore. I'm going to stop being so frivolous with my money. I'm going to try harder. I'm going to stop making decisions out of insecurity. I'm going to do that. January's coming. I'm going to turn over a new leaf. I'm going to try harder. I'm going to pull myself up my bootstraps. And a few weeks in, you will find that you have failed yourself again. And that is the most frustrating place to be. And then you're disappointed with yourself. And then you wonder why you can't get it together. And why am I winning here? And why am I failing there? Because at the core of your issue, it's not natural. It's spiritual. And it needs a spiritual solution. And here's the spiritual issue we all have. It's that we are all sinners it's not a condemning statement I know some of you are thinking oh this is where they break out that you're all sinners and you're going to hell and you know cut your hair take your earring out of your ear boys and pull your pants up no the Bible says God doesn't look at the outward appearance he looks at the heart God's after your heart We all have a spiritual issue. It's called sin. 
We're not mistakers who make mistakes. We're sinners who sin. Mistake insinuates it was an accident. But some of you planned your mistakes. You planned to meet up online at 1 a.m. while your wife was asleep. That's not a mistake. Sin. You planned when you got to work to give them a piece of your mind. I start giving people pieces of my mind. The older I get, I need all of it I can keep. It's not a mistake. We're all sinners. We're born with it. And if you don't believe that, because you're not a parent. My little girl came in the living room the other day from the kitchen. She goes, Daddy, she's two. I have two under two. Pray for me. She goes, Daddy. She's got big curly hair, big blue eyes. I was like, what, baby? No. <laughs> I did this. I like, what did I do to you? <laughs> you don't have to teach us to sin because we're born with it. And if you keep diagnosing your issue as a natural thing, you'll keep prescribing stuff that will leave you in dead ends. You have a spiritual issue. You need a spiritual solution. It's the whole point of Christmas. God knew it. So he sent his only son, Jesus, to die for you. You are a spirit being. You needed a spiritual solution. So Jesus came, this little baby. He didn't stay a baby. He grew up. He had three years of public ministry where he healed the sick and raised the lame and opened blinded eyes where he looked at women who were caught in the act of adultery and said, I don't condemn you. Just go and stop that. He showed grace, kindness, mercy, love, compassion. He hung out with the people that nobody would hang out with. He sat at the table with drunks and tax collectors and people who in that society were the bottom of the barrel. But he sat in the temple and talked to the religious and he stood before kings. And then he hung on a cross. He didn't have to. He could have called down, as the old song says, 10,000 angels. But he didn't for you. He knew that someone needed to pay the penalty of your sin. And he was willing to do it. If there had been a courtroom in heaven, you and I would stand before God guilty as charged. And when the sentencing was coming down, which is death, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. That's eternal separation from a holy God. When the sentencing was coming down, Jesus pushed you out of the way and he stepped in and he said, Father, give me the sentence. That's why he hung on a cross. He didn't hang on a cross because he wanted to. He hung on a cross because he had to because he loved you and he cared about you. The Bible said for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. What was the joy before him? It was you, ma'am. It was you, sir. It was you, young person. You were the joy set before him. So he endured the pain of the cross. He endured the nails in his hand. He endured the crown of thorns in his head. He went through the pain. He went through the anguish. He allowed them to rip skin off his back. Why? Because he saw you in 2018 sitting in a service. And for the joy set before him, he endured the pain of the cross. So that you don't have to live at dead ends. So that you can have a brand new beginning today. So in just a moment, I'm going to invite you to invite him into your life. You know, the Bible says that he stands at the door and he knocks. But it doesn't say that he stands at the door and knocks it in. It doesn't say that he kicks it in. It said that he just gently invites you to invite him in. So here's the deal. You can leave this place and continue living in a dead end if you want. And God will let you because he won't force himself on you. But he's knocking at the door of your heart in this moment for many of you. I really sense that God is speaking to some people. But it's up to you to open the door. And it's up to you to invite him in.
I just want to give you that opportunity to make the greatest decision that you'll ever make. And that's to invite Jesus into your life. It's not about religion. It's not about joining this church. It's not about any of that. It's about you and God. It's not even about you and me. And this moment is about you and God. So I'm going to ask that you'd bow your head and close your eyes with me at every location. With no one looking around, this is a very holy moment. I'm going to ask campus pastors, if they would, to make their way to their platform. And if God is speaking to you tonight, and you don't need me to tell you that, you know. For some of you, your heart is about to beat out of your chest. You know that God is speaking to you in this moment. The God who loves you so much that he gave his son. He's knocking. He's knocking. Will you let him in? So in just a moment, we're going to pray together as a church. For the benefit of those praying for the very first time. And if you'd say, Pastor, I want to be included in that prayer. I want to know that I have peace with God when I leave this place tonight. I want to know that my sins are forgiven. If that's you, I'm going to count to three with no one looking around. I just want you to shoot your hand up real high. I want to know who we're praying with at every location. When I get to three, you just, you just boldly, unashamedly, he unashamedly hung on a cross for you. You can lift your hand for him. If that's you, when I get to three, you just shoot it up on three. One, two, three. You just shoot it up high. Up high. God bless you. God bless you all over the room. You can put them down. Church, let's pray this out loud for the benefit of those praying it for the very first time. Just say, Jesus, I need you. I ask you to give me a new beginning. Forgive me for all my sin. I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate with all those who made that decision. Amen. <laughs> I have my mic on mute. But well, praise the Lord, everybody. This is Reverend Ray. I'm, uh, I really seriously um, enjoyed that message uh, by Pastor Daniel Floyd, amen, uh, from Life Point Churches, uh, amen, located in Fredericksburg, Virginia. That was an awesome word. I pray that you did too. I pray that you would share that message, uh, amen, that you were right. Know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. I, I pray that too. Uh, this is a message definitely for 2019 that you might be touched, and you might to know you might also remember that God loves you uh, with so much that is going on in the world today. Amen. We need words, uh, messages, or sermon or teaching like this. So be encouraged. You know, again, we want to wish all of you a, a, a great and prosperous new year and that you will seek after the things of God and that he will be in your life. Amen. So be blessed. Don't forget. Amen. Uh, please share this this broadcast, Minister Ben. Ben, we definitely want you to share. Um, um, get in contact with us at, on our Facebook page or When Christian Speak or send us a message through When Christian Speak at gmail.com, especially if we have accepted that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Amen. And know that we love you. God bless you. This is Reverend Ray. And um, Minister Van, are you with us? Did you have something you want to add or no? I just want to um, thank everyone for listening. And remember, you can go to LifePoint's website, which is lifepoint.org, O-R-G, um, to find the, the locations of our church as well as the, the service time. And I want to thank everyone. And, again, just wish everyone a very, very happy New Year. And God bless you. Amen. God bless. Thanks again, Minister Van. God bless you. God bless you.